Okay, we've pretty much finished with HTML for the moment. HTML is used for creating static web pages, um, and the, a lot of most web pages that are on the web uh, on the internet at the moment are partly static, but they're also partly dynamic. And to do dynamic web pages, there are a number of different scripting languages out there. Um, you've got client-side scripting languages such as JavaScript, and you've also got server-side scripting languages such as PHP, JSP, ASP.NET. Um, I'm going to concentrate. We're going to do PHP because this is sort of prelude to Drupal, and Drupal's written in PHP. Um, quite a lot of high-profile websites, in fact, most of the high-profile websites are also written in PHP. Um, things like Wikipedia or Facebook, um, and uh, PHP is pretty much the number one server-side scripting language. Um, the, the essentials of a, a server-side scripting language is it's an automatic way of generating HTML. So as far as your web browser is concerned, it's going to be getting HTML but from the server side, the server sort of taking on various variables and, and playing around with stuff and doing quite a lot of tinkering under, under, you know, behind the scenes. Um, but the principle still lies that HTML is the front end, PHP is the sort of the stuff in the middle, and then you might have a back end written in MySQL. But, I mean, to get going, we need to download um, some software. We need to download a web server, which is Apache, which is the number one web server that that's used at the moment. Um, we also don't need to download MySQL itself, and we need to download the PHP script. Now, we could do that separately, but because we're working on a Windows machine specifically, uh, it gets quite tinkery and funny. Um, so we're going to download it as a package, and we're going to download it as something called ZAMP, which stands for Cross-Platform Apache MySQL and PHP and Perl. So just type in ZAMP there, and we go here to the ZAMP website. Now, ZAMP is released for all the different platforms, all the different w operating systems, well, most of them. Um, the one we want to go for is Windows, and what we want to download is just the simple installer. So we're going to download that, and it should come up. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I say that quite a lot at the moment, don't I? Here we go. Save file. That's going to take a minute and a bit, so I'm going to waffle over the top of that. Um, ZAMP is one option. Obviously, you could download Apache MySQL and PHP separately, but that gets quite fiddly. Um, there are other solutions out there as well. There's something called WAMP, which stands for Windows, Apache MySQL, and PHP. Um, there's also something out there called Easy PHP, um, which does a similar thing. And there's something out there called Zen Server Community Edition, which, once again, does a similar thing. But I, I, I find ZAMP is the simplest and the most straightforward. Um, and as well as having Apache MySQL and PHP, it's obviously got Perl in there as well. It's also got uh, Mercury Mail Server, and it's also got Tomcat Web Server, if you want to do any Java JSP development. Um, but for the time being, we're, we're just concentrate. We're just going to be doing PHP and MySQL. Um, it's Apache comes in lots of different variations as well. Uh, the, one, the one we're going to be dealing with here is slightly different from from other bits other versions that are released on other operating systems and in fact even different um, distributions of Linux have got different bits of Apache but just technical stuff to be to be aware of but not to get too bogged down in because we're not really interested well, we're not really concentrating on, on systems administration at the moment we just want to get in there and, and get working um, one of the downsides of ZAMP is its security and it's not really intended to be a proper web hosting environment um, because of the security features aren't really up and running on it, but it's it's good. We're not really too concerned about that. We just want to get going and tinker around with it. So that's downloaded. The installer's downloaded. Just click on that. Dump, dump, dump. Because an activated Windows Vista account is possibly restricted. Well, well, we'll worry about that when we come to it. Um, we will worry about that when we come to it. Um, yeah, for so for that reason, um, ZAMP isn't used as an actual web hosting, even though it could be. Um, there's no reason why not, apart from the security aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I find it's quite good. Um, other than that, also be aware that MySQL comes in various different versions, as does PHP, as does Apache to some extent too. But just be aware that there's a difference between PHP 5.3, which is the most up-to-date version, and PHP 5.2. Uh, I think MySQL, you're on 5.1 with MySQL, but there are other versions within that. Um, just things to be aware of, not, not too much to, to, to worry about, because it, it seems to go forward um, and work okay. I'm just fingers crossed this is going to unload and extract properly. Um, but I mean the good thing about this is it's, it's all automated. The bad thing is automated things have bugs in the system sometimes. And what else can I think about? Oh, the one possible thing, 
we'll worry about it when we come to MySQL development later is, is the difference between MySQL and MySQL I, just slightly different extensions, um, slightly different coding standards. Uh, but the good thing about PHP is, is there's a website, the, the online website for PHP is, is very extensive. It's got everything on there, all the different functions and all the different variables that you might want to d use. But we're jumping ahead of ourselves. I'm just using this as waffling while this downloads in front of us. And that was Tomcat just up there. That's all for JSP development. Here we go. This should all work. Um, just click on finish here. Start the Zap control panel. Up comes the control panel down there. Uh, one thing that you want to be wary of with this control panel is don't click on that red X because that will get rid of the graphical user interface, but it will carry on working in the background and it will get a bit funny about whether it's running or not. But for the moment, we'll just click on start there, click on start there, minimize that, go back to our browser and type in local host. Click on there, we're in. Click on English, we're in. And we're up and running with ZAMP. See how easy it is. Uh, now, the most important thing you want to remember with ZAMP is where your document root is. So we'll go up here. We'll go to C. We'll find ZAMP down there. There's ZAMP. Now, the document root is under here. It's in htdocs. So when you start off with, this is where everything is going to be saved to. Um, and we're going to start off doing something called a PHP info file. And... Whenever you do PHP, it's a bit like HTML in that you have to have opening and closing tags to tell the web server that it's it's PHP, and you also have to save it with an extension which says PHP. But anyway, we'll start off with the opening tag there. Now we're going to start with, this is a basic way of just testing that it's working, and we're going to use a, f a, a PHP function called PHP info, which tells you a, a bit of basic info about PHP. Now whenever you have a function in PHP, you have brackets like that. Sometimes they contain very sometimes they contain parameters, um, sometimes they don't, and you close off the line with a semicolon, similar to the way we've done with CSS in the past, and then you just have a closing tag, question mark, thing there. So you've got the square brackets, you've got the question marks, you've got PHP at the top, and those are common to all PHP scripts. Um, that's an example of a PHP function, and we're just going to save as go over to C, scroll down to ZAMP, here we go, down to htdocs, um, and we might as well save it as phpinfo.php, just like that. Um, seems to be okay, stick that over to one side, and now we'll just type in localhost phpinfo.php, fingers crossed, up it comes. There we go. This shows that everything's working. We are on PHP version, as I was saying before about the different versions, 5.3, 5.5. Don't really worry about the 0.5 at the end, but remember 5.3. Um, you can scroll down, and it gives you quite a lot of different bits of technical information. Not really relevant at the moment, but later on you might want to have a think about things. Uh, MySQL I, uh, MySQL, all the different bits, configuration stuff. But it, it shows that it's working, and this is the standard way. And there we go. We've got our PHP development environment up and running in not very much time at all. Anyway, next tutorial will be going on and looking at just basic variables and basic input and output type things.